Okay. okay. Steve, first name and spelling so I have that for the people. Stephen Torborg, T O R B O R G. Stephen or the V. And your background, your job, and your involvement with the Railroad Museum? Uh, almost 30 years with the Long Island Railroad and Conrail before that, conductor. And uh, you're on the board. And all that other stuff. Been with the museum since the very first day. Now tell me the significance of today and you know why this is kind of a big day in history for the yard and the museum and what's actually going on here today. Uh, well we're laying the track in the yard which will be our display tracks for all of our equipment that we have. This particular track, track number three, is going to be the display track for our steam locomotive 35 um, once it's restored. Um, while it's being restored all of the parts will be in storage on this track and essentially we're going to reconstruct the locomotive here on this track. Um, long term plans to have it pole barn over it to protect it from the elements and to be able to display it and to be able to move it around the yard. So tell me about everybody that's come out today. You know you have a lot of volunteers from a lot of different areas, people who you know kind of stop doing what they were going to do today to come in, people from the Long Island Railroad like you. Can you just talk about, you know, why people are so excited to be here and be a part of this process? Well, we have uh, volunteers from our own museum, of course, um, all different age groups. Um, they come out for everything, cold, hot, dirty, snow, rain, doesn't matter. They're always here, always doing whatever work needs to be done anywhere around the museum, painting, laying track, um, groundskeeping, whatever it is. They do everything. Um, we also have uh, volunteers from the Twin Forks chapter, National Railway Historical Society, that have come out to help us today. Uh, we have volunteers uh, from other organizations, the Catskill Mountain. Um, we have uh, volunteers from all over the place, from Brooklyn and from the East End of Long Island and everywhere else, as well as local, of course. Um, everybody's here for the same reason. They all want to help. Some are here more because they want to see Locomotive 35 restored and put back together here. Some because they just want to see the tracks put in so that we can be um, more of a museum and a little less of a storage facility. Um, and some are just here because they just want to help. So for you, this is extra special because you were involved in Local 35. And was this always the dream or the vision that this is how where it would land you know I know like not originally but when once you got here at the museum that these tracks would be laid and this is kind of what was gonna where it was gonna be we we started in Mitchell Field with the goal of just restoring the steam locomotive same locomotive that's still being worked on locomotive 35 um, but it evolved into more than what it was um, while we were looking for a permanent home for locomotive 35 because we had to get out of Mitchell Field the way we were um, Oyster Bay had the historic train station and was actually able to acquire this property on lease from the railroad and um, they had a facility that didn't have trains we had trains that needed a home they had a home without the trains so they worked perfect together and the museum grew we got more equipment we got more people um, we became uh, I'm going to say more legitimized from being just a volunteer group to being an actual um, museum restoration and preservation became our goal and every sense everything that we do from the station to the trains to the artifacts and um, we've kind of stayed the course with that and uh, I guess over the last 30 plus years um, I've seen things change dramatically and I couldn't be more proud than where we are. Real people, real volunteers working on real trains. Why do you think people, I mean, you guys, your volunteers are pretty passionate and they show up in all weather, like you said. They're, uh, they'll give up their Saturdays to come here. Why? Like, what's, is there a particular, you know, type of person who wants to do this volunteer work? We have people from pretty much every background. The noise being made back there is Robert. Robert is a cabinet maker by trade. He wanted to help out with his son here, Jeremy, and um, it turns out that his cabinet making skills are perfect for working on that caboose because uh, it, it's woodwork and it's specialized woodwork that none of us know how to do. Um, so for him, it's a passion that became, I guess, a, a bigger passion. Uh, we have people here that are train buffs, rail fans. We have people here that work for the railroad and wanted to do something other than what they do and help out. We have people here 
that have special skills and we have people here that just want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Um, maybe something that will be here long after they're here and come and gone and you know if we can all contribute something um, you know that's kind of how it works. Can you give people an idea of kind of how difficult this process is that you're doing today? I mean this is pretty heavy manual labor of and the labor of love to put in all the you know put in the tracks and the spikes and everything else that you're doing it's it's uh can you talk about the kind of level of difficulty it's difficult it's hard work it's backbreaking work there are easier ways to do it you can hire a company to come in and do this but in my opinion that would be a misuse of our donated funds um uh, i like to believe people donate money because they want to see trains restored not because they want to see track moving together um, we have people that want to do this, people that have never laid track. Um, this is laying track, old school, this is the way it was done, transcontinental railroad. Uh, ties are a little different, but other than that, um, it's pretty much exactly the same process as it was back in the day. Um, the ties are brand new, but the rail and the spikes and the plates and everything, they all came from the siding that was donated to us in Farmingdale last year. And um, this is actual track materials that were laid this way by hand back in probably the 20s and 30s when that siding was put in. And this rail was reclaimed from the main line. Locomotive 35 probably ran on this rail in the 30s and 40s. So the track itself is historical. But yeah, it's manual backbreaking work, but it's something that is a labor of love. It's a passion. We'll all be sore tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, you know, to be able to do this, I'm a conductor. I look out the window and I watch the track workers on the tracks and I now have a whole new appreciation for what they do because even though a lot of it is mechanized, there are certain aspects of track laying that are still done by hand today. There's just no other way to do it. So this is really being a part of history doing this? Oh, yes. And preservation? Preservation, restoration, that's what we're all about here. And, we do. and also you were talking about like you know bringing in young people if you just your philosophy on the future and the future of the museum and attracting younger people to become volunteers and you know maybe one day being on the board and well we we have um, as a case of point uh, Ronnie back here who he is on our board of directors now he's a young guy came here as a a young uh, train enthusiast, rail fan, train buff, whatever you want to call it, um, came, got involved with us because he liked what he saw, he liked the way we work, he wanted to learn more about things, he wanted to be a better part of things, and now he is on our board of directors, he is the chairman of our Locomotive 35 Restoration Project. Um, we firmly believe in teaching, we firmly believe in allowing people to find their comfort zone, to find what interests them, and to do things that they want to do. Uh, we don't discourage youth, we don't discourage uh, people that don't have experience with things, we actually embrace it. Um, Jeremy here in the teal jacket is underage, one of our young volunteers. He has come here, uh, he's been here for a couple of years. He's one of our safety people that works on the turntable. He's one of our people that does a lot of work on a lot of different projects around here. And uh, Jeremy has been embraced in the idea of, if you want to do it, we'll teach you to do it. And we'll let you learn it and we'll let you get to your comfort zone. We'll keep you safe. And um, Jeremy's actually one of our safety people. He points out a lot of the things that, you know, hey, you should have a hard hat, you should have safety glasses, things like that, to make sure that our people work safe. And your oldest member here? And our oldest member here is in his 80s, and that would be? I'm Bernard. Bernard. Wave, Bernard. How old are you now, Bernard? 79. 79. My so, dad. Okay, so give me, again, your oldest, because you were turned the other way and I probably wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, Bernard is 79 years old. He's one of our, um, our most faithful volunteers. He is here all the time, no matter what the work is, no matter how dirty it is, no matter how hard it is. He's here, he works, he gets dirty, and uh, he enjoys it. For some reason, he just keeps coming back. So this is a dream come true for you, part of the dream right here. Well, the dream is a fully functioning museum with tracks all around and a steam locomotive running and the trains running and a hundred people coming in the gate on opening day. But yeah, we're, we're getting there. When you consider that we started out in Mitchell Field with the steam locomotive, we stored our tools inside the tender. They were our tools because we weren't a museum. We didn't have any tools. 
we couldn't raise funds because we were a volunteer group under Nassau County Museums. Um, now we're incorporated. We're a legitimate museum, a 501c3 not-for-profit educational museum. People can donate. People can follow. We have a huge Facebook following. Um, we have, uh, on average, uh, a dozen volunteers for most work sessions, summer, winter, doesn't make a difference. And uh, again, all age groups. Um, we have a few females that, that come down as well, and they get just as dirty as the males do, um, sometimes dirtier. And we, we, we have a good time, we enjoy it. We're kind of like a family here, everybody looks out for each other. Perfect.